Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Marshall. And this is a jumbo-sized episode number 19. You're not Aaron. No, decidedly not Aaron. Okay, so uh, obviously uh, not Aaron, um, similar in, in uh, shape and size and look. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, Marshall, um, you want to go ahead and say a little bit about yourself here? Sure, yeah. So, uh, I am Marshall Hawks. I am the other half of the season ticket holder duo that was Aaron and Marshall for a good decade uh, over the last uh, 10 years. And Aaron left the state. He went to, I believe, Boston mm. uh, with his lovely wife and seeing her family. So he needed a stand in who hopefully wouldn't sound any smarter than he is. <laughs> and here I am. Uh, so my hockey bona fides, if you will, would be grew up in Fremont, uh, went to a lot of the Sharks uh, games when they started at the Cow Palace, started skating at what is now Sharks Ice, nice. formerly Isoplex back mm -hmm. in the day. Uh, I wasn't very good at talking to girls, so I just did a lot of skating uh, when I was that there. Works. Yeah, that was that was kind of what the junior high kids <laughs> did. I just did the skating part. Uh, my nephew is in the Dallas Stars Tier One Elite program, which just means by osmosis, I can learn from him playing. Uh, I've played adult hockey. I kind of that's that's about it. Yeah, that's good. And you've got again the similar look. So hopefully, yeah. if you're squinting, uh, you yeah, you just beard. think it's Aaron, and it's okay. Um, <laughs> So yeah, uh, thank you for, for coming on and filling in. We uh, appreciate you being a part of the show. Happy so, to be here. Yeah. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a injury update. Mm. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the guys that are uh, having a hard time right now. And actually one of them being Eric Carlson. He was missing at practice recently. Uh, actually the last practice that I went to, uh, which would be I guess today Sunday, uh, he was there. But the practice prior to that, before the game against the Islanders, he, yep. was, he was missing in action. Apparently it was because he had the flu. It may be the case that LeBanc and Hurdle are also uh, suffering from the flu as well. Um, yep. Haven't seen those guys at practice, uh, Carlson aside. So um, one thing to keep in mind if he's kind of feeling on the, the downside of it, maybe just give him a little bit of a break if, uh, if their numbers are a little bit lower than what we're expecting. But anyway, um, one thing to keep in mind. The other one being Joe Thornton. Uh, he had the uh, draining of, of that in his mm. knee, I believe is what it was. And so he was on antibiotics, I believe. He, they said 10 to 14 days. Now, as of the day that he was on antibiotics, that would be, gosh, what, he'd be ready to go for Tuesday's game. Yep. Right, against the Predators. So yep. he's actually flying with the team. Yep. That's correct. Uh, I think Dylan Gambrell is also flying with them just in case. Yep, they got an extra yeah, on there. Which is good. So uh, we should be covered there. And I think we might see Jumbo play even as early as Tuesday. Uh, it may or may not be the case. We'll have to wait and see. It'll be interesting to see when he does get in, I think with the player of his caliber and the way the Sharks have been playing, at least the last two games, yeah. you know, who do they end up deciding to sit? And maybe more importantly, you know, where does Joe kind of slot back into the lineup? Mm -hmm. um, I think there's, you know, a lot of speculation as you just go back to the top line or the Joe Thornton line, if you will, or <laughs> does he, you know, maybe get a little bit less or lower minutes down third, fourth, which would be pretty interesting. Yeah. To see what happens if you just have Rourke Chartier probably come out, uh, given he was the one who came back up when right. when Thornton came in. You know, if Joe's kind of down on those lower lines, that'd be pretty fun to actually see. Um, yeah, I think it'd be great. I, I mean, it, and this is me being selfish, right? I, I would just love to see Joe play a, uh, alongside Goodrow and, and Carlson, or mm -hmm. you know, if it's Rourke Chartier that's still in the lineup, whoever. Um, I would love to see him play with those guys because that truly means you've got four lines that are just deadly. Yep. Um, the first uh, first three lines, if you will, the Couture line, the Pavelski line, and the mm -hmm. Suomela line, those guys are rolling right now. Everybody's playing really well. Yep. They've all gelled really nicely together. Um, Sorensen's really stepped up. Uh, playing alongside of Sumela and Donskoy, they they looked like a complete line. They looked phenomenal. No one's yeah. out of place there. Yeah. So um, I I I kind of struggle to say okay, let's let's shift Pavelski back or remove Kane back uh, to where he was alongside uh, Sorensen. I'm sorry, where Sorensen is playing now. Yep. Move Sorensen yep. back down with uh, Goodrow. I shouldn't say down, but play put him next to Goodrow and uh, Rourke Chartier or Carlson, whoever is also on that line. Because that kind of shakes everything up, right? Mm -hmm. The only thing that stays intact is the Couture line. 
So I would be more inclined to say, yeah, put Joe with, with Goodrow and put Joe with Carlson and then have four lines that are just insane. Uh, as long as you've got those guys still rolling. If there's any hiccups in there, obviously, yeah, I would slot him back in where he was. Yeah, I think the uh, the thing I think you guys have covered in the past on the thin factor as well, I mean, just <laughs> the, the speed of Joe Thornton and the line he was on at the beginning of the season uh, sure. with Pavelski in particular, I mean, those two guys aren't necessarily the biggest speed demons, and right. when you combine them, I'm not sure. It worked for part of last season before his injury, but it'll be interesting to see what DeBoer wants to do. You know, it's a good problem to have, yeah. but the the speed of um, both those players, I mean, I think Pavelski's even probably taken a step back from what I can tell, at least from last season, mm -hmm. and he's still a great player, but you don't want him on the same line, so putting Thornton with two guys like yeah. um, the fourth line, you know, you'll have, you'll have speed to match his playmaking ability. Yeah, that's that's a great point. Yeah. So uh, one of the things we want to talk about, actually, uh, power play improvements, things mm. that, that have been uh, going well. Mm. And <laughs> since, uh, and again, I, I talked about this uh, the last episode, and, and I referred back to episode number one, where we said, yeah, I don't know, if we have uh, Burns, if, if Carlson were to come on board when we had Burns and Carlson, you'd want to put them on the same unit, right? And I was saying, I don't think so. I think you'd want to split them. Yeah. All of a sudden, uh, we, we split them up, and uh, some good things good happened. Thing happened. Yeah, I'm going to pat myself on the back again. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think, I think it seems like you kind of called that one, Paul. Oh, yeah. I, I think we'll, we'll come on to a little later about like panic versus patience, but I think the sure. power play is a good microcosm of that, where you say, listen, with Carlson joining the team at the beginning mm -hmm. of the season, you say, oh, gosh, this, this is going to be a offensively, uh, like there won't be any offensive challenges. It's going to be great. You know, power play is going to be rolling. But I think it takes... You, know, you put the D pairings and change them up, all three of them, at the start of the season, and they've all mm -hmm. kind of figured, got to figure out yeah. how to work with each other. And then certainly on the power play, whether you're rolling two defensemen or one, depending on the configuration, you mm -hmm. know, I think they've had to figure out how to, frankly, best use Carlson in particular, um, and and his kind of abilities. Where we were talking about, you know, kind of um, Vlasic pivoting to the top. Yeah. Of uh, you know of the offensive third and Carlson really playing almost the half boards where Joe Thornton would frankly regularly kind of sit on that right side yeah. uh, when he's out there. Uh, it's been pretty interesting to watch, and I think that's just recent the last two games where he's really figured that out. Yeah, and and the power play is clicking. I mean, they went three for seven in Buffalo. Uh, yeah. It's hard to say that it's not. And the nice thing is both power play units scored. Mm -hmm. And again, now DeBoer said, "Listen, it's not because we split up." Burns and Carlson. That's not why the power play worked. And to some extent, I agree. Uh, it, both of those units have been getting really great chances. Even on five on five, they've been getting really great chances. Yep. Um, it, it just the puck just hasn't been finding the back of the net. Um, but you split those two guys up, and all of a sudden, both of them become just that much more deadly. Mm -hmm. And the puck found the back of the net three out of seven times. I don't know. I, I, you can argue if you'd like, but that's that's what happened. Those are the results. <laughs> yep. So I don't know. I, I think it's a great move, keeping them apart. In fact, again, I was at practice and um, mm -hmm. watching them play uh, or practice their power play units. And you've got Burns on one side of the ice, Carlson's on the other side of the ice, and it's the, the top unit, power play one, is with Burns, and power play two is with Carlson. Yep. And literally in the middle of practice or middle of that drill, they say, okay, switch. And I'm figuring, okay, they're they're switching the defensive <laughs> guys. And it, you know, they're gonna change things up. No, literally just Carlson and Burns. Just that's it. So uh, that's that's really what I think is gonna happen. They've got their forwards on power play one set. Mm -hmm. They've got the rest of the guys because Vlasic's playing on power play two. They've got those guys set on power play two and either Burns or Carlson are interchangeable between those two, depending on who maybe just had a shift mm -hmm. or who's got the hot hand, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. We've talked about good problems to have, and this is just one of them. Well, I think their, their styles, you know, stylistically, it's been interesting to, to watch them play. I've watched Carlson a little bit in Ottawa. I certainly watched Burns mm -hmm. a lot more being on the Sharks, but um, I think Burns is very much biases towards a shoot first yes. mentality. I mean, he just likes to, I mean, he wins. I think he had the most shots by far of any, mm -hmm. not only defenseman, but almost, I think it's every, player last season, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, by a good margin. Whereas I think Carlson, you watch him, and while he might look like he's shooting a lot of the time, I think most of the time he's been intentionally off yeah. by a couple of feet trying to get tip-ins, trying to get you know a shot pass going on. So I mm -hmm. think his bias is to to be a bit more like a playmaker on when he's quarterbacking uh, versus Burns. It's been interesting. And I, I think it's great. I think it's great that not only does that bring a difference in the power play, but I also think the fact that they're trying to get them to be able to be interchangeable, yeah. you can kind of put whatever piece of that you mm -hmm. want 
um, on the power play. And the awesome thing about that is it, it changes that dynamic. It's not like you're just putting another offensive defenseman in his place. For sure. You're changing the whole dynamic, as you just said. Yeah, it's totally With different. With Burns, you're probably going to see more of the direct shots on goal, mm -hmm. especially from that point. He loves that wrist shot from, from, <laughs> from the blue line, right? And he always seems to sneak it through. Um, but then with Carlson, you get a lot more of that indirect stuff, right? right. And going to that to that point, I think Burns is probably going to score more goals than Carlson, not because he's necessarily better, but because of that. I think yep. it's you know Carlson's more of the playmaking mindset as opposed to Burns, which is more of the just pound the net, right? <laughs> um, so I don't know. I, I I'm I'm totally fine with Carlson getting less goals. I'm totally fine with Carlson being more of the playmaker. Um, another awesome playmaker on the team, Logan Couture. Um, yeah. He had one heck of a night as well. He did. I think uh, the last two games in particular, he's yeah. had pretty good nights. Certainly the game, two nights ago, or two games back, where he had a hat trick. Yeah. Uh, that's always a fun one. Uh, I don't know how many, Paul, I, we were, didn't talk about it earlier, but okay. how many hats have you ever thrown onto the ice for a, like how many, have you been I've, to I've, a Sharks game live when there's a hat trick I have happening. only been to one, and I believe I did throw a hat. What but what what hat did you throw? You it was remember? not a very good not hat. Good hat. I, um, I it's I, I don't tend to bring like the awesome hats <laughs> to yeah, <laughs> just in case. But um, yeah, it was it was a shark's hat at least. Of course. Yeah, so. uh, I think uh, Aaron and I. It was when Chichu and oh, when gosh. Thornton got traded. <laughs> He's got, I think, nine hat tricks for his whole career now, but most of them happened that first season when he, or the yeah. first season with Thornton and the Rocket Richard. I think we probably threw three hats apiece. Oh my goodness! I mean, it was just like we needed to buy yeah. new hats. Like it was, it was happening <laughs> just on the regular. And you're like, all right, uh, yeah. So Couture, um, even though the last one, um, two nights or two games back, empty was netter. was an empty netter. I think it was pretty well deserved because the first two were were driven by. I think just how impressive his, his hockey sense is, yeah. kind of being off, you know, off in the open space, um, to the side, out of the play, waiting for that rebound. It's pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah, and it's such a great thing for him to put up a hat trick after all of the criticism and whatnot. And that's a really great way to respond by uh, putting up three goals in a game. Yeah, he. Uh, I think he was the one where everyone, you know, he's the serious member of the Sharks, <laughs> if you will, where everyone else is a little bit more happy-go-lucky. Joe Thornton, Brent Burns, yeah. in particular, they're the the funny guys and all the commercials, and everything else. <laughs> Um, Couture, I think, is a little more like Jonathan Taves in Chicago, where they, he's, he's called Captain Serious. Yeah. I think Couture is very much the same, where um, he wasn't super stoked with the performance of the team so far, and then came back mm -hmm. uh, two games back and really put the uh, put that criticism uh, away. He sure put the hurt on him. That's what he did. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, Buffalo was not happy that he was annoyed. <laughs> yeah, so, so that kind of leads us right into the panic versus patience, right? Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I mean, just like the, what had happened with Couture. Yep. So, did we need to panic about that, about the, the offense jumping in, or did we just need to be patient? I think the obvious answer is we just needed to be patient with it, right? Yeah, Paul, you uh, sadly aren't a member of the, the league that I play in with Aaron, a fantasy hockey league the last 10 years. Yes, we have no life. Yes, we do this for fun. That's kind of the only <laughs> thing we do in fantasy sports. And I think the cardinal rule of fantasy hockey in particular is you never drop anybody off your team in the first 10 games, maybe 20, because you don't really have a full snapshot yeah. of how somebody's playing and whether they're going to be amazing, whether they're going to be terrible. I mean, those things, you don't really have a full body of work mm -hmm. until you get to that, I would say, 15, 20-game mark. So Martin Jones in particular, who you could say the um, the team didn't look all that great. I didn't think he looked all that great in the first you know four or five games. Actually, Aaron Dell got in one of those. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, wait a minute. Is there a little goalie controversy? Right. <laughs> Not really. I think the 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 balance of work and particularly the last two games where he did he had a much better kind of playing from the lead and goal support but he was doing um, some pretty good work and a couple of key saves to keep momentum in particular going the Sharks way maybe not the lead in in those games because um, Buffalo and the Islanders we had the lead and kept it but mm -hmm. um, he in particular is somebody where I think you know panic versus uh, patience yeah. came yeah. into play and a lot of patience for sure. Yeah, um, I, I'm going to have to agree with you on that one. Uh, we were talking about goalie controversy and the, the lack thereof. And uh, mm -hmm. last episode, we had talked about a host controversy. And uh, so I replaced Aaron. Maybe I, I shouldn't <laughs> have jumped so fast. I don't know. I, you've been doing a great job, though. So Thank, thank you. Um, but, you know, Backhanded looking at, compliment. <laughs> looking at uh, a guy like Eric Carlson, for instance, right? Um, 
he's like you had mentioned I think on the live stream he's he's you know got the biggest minus on the team now yeah plus minus isn't exactly a stat that's super telling in terms of how how a player is doing but it I, I still hold that it, it has meaning in some way shape or form mm -hmm. um, but if we look at some of the other things that Eric Carlson's doing right the possession numbers and whatnot um, mm -hmm. the shots on goal not necessarily his but when he's on the ice uh, are we putting more shots on yes we are uh, so I think the idea that we need to panic, you know, right away. I'm, I'm with you on that one, and I'm glad you said 15 to 20 games because that's exactly what I had said. Is <laughs> I'll wait till the 15, 20 game mark before I start, you know, kind of getting a little concerned here. Right, which means actually the inverse of this would be, I think, the last two games, which were awesome. You know, two teams in Buffalo and the New York Islanders who are. They're not terrible, but they're not powerhouses yeah. either. They're somewhere in the middle, a couple, you know, maybe rebuild, rebuild modes with Eichel in mm -hmm. particular in Buffalo. Um, you know, that you don't want to say, okay, the Sharks have figured it out, right? It's just 100% perfect. <laughs> There's a lot of them, it's two games. You, know, you, you want to wait until that 15, 20 game mark to really right. know what you got, know how, everybody play, how, how folks are playing together. I think the biggest thing you can take out of these two games that I think you and I were kicking around in the live stream as well is, you know, playing with confidence. I think yeah. you started to see. Um, confidence, maybe even not so much confidence, it's probably more of like, okay, comfort level. I think everyone started to feel a little bit more okay being who they are as a player. You saw that with Carlson, I think you saw mm -hmm. that with Suomela, Su mm -hmm. where you know they were, uh, Tomas Hurdle in particular, the three of them in particular the last game, oh, yeah. you know, they were making some plays where um, you know, bouncing the puck off the net, Suomela, <laughs> uh, you know, had his his assist to Donskoy, but he also tried to chip the puck over the back of the net in the third period, which you don't see very often. <laughs> uh, I think just guys really playing with confidence, some, or it looked like they were playing with confidence. Some Datsuk, Datsuk level yeah. stuff going on there. <laughs> yeah, for right? sure. Yeah, no, I mean, when you start seeing players doing things like that, um, trying to chip a puck over the net from behind the net, when you see Eric Carlson uh, going five hole on a defenseman, <laughs> right, uh, putting it between his legs and, and skating right around the guy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, when you start seeing Burnsy getting down low and, and um, going on the backhand it, right in, in the crease there and, and putting one five hole on, on uh, Leonard, I believe it was, yeah. Um, yep. I mean, these are things that you start seeing guys get out of this conservative play mode. Mm -hmm. This, uh, you know, they, they kind of get out of this comfort uh, zone, right, mm -hmm. of playing like within the lines of, of the playbook necessarily yep. and kind of stepping out of the box and doing these things that, you know, any normal player would feel maybe a little less comfortable doing. They're starting to gel. They're starting to feel more comfortable playing with each other and they're mm -hmm. doing these things that are a little bit outside of the book. Well, I would say, you know, the defensive pairings in particular where, and I think we've covered this, you guys have covered this in the past as mm -hmm. well on the show. I mean, the Carlson coming in, you shift every defensive pairing, all three sets of guys have to figure out how do I play with this person who I haven't mm -hmm. really played a lot, or haven't spent a lot of minutes with, and in Eric Carlson's case, nobody's played with him at all. So I think that was probably one of the bigger things where you had comfort level from the D pairings where, you know, maybe a Burns feels much more well, frankly, he tends to do what he wants to do, but he, you know, he he went forward. That was a four on four, but he knew he had people cycling yeah. back to cover him. And I think a lot of that's you know, how do you read what someone's going to do? Anticipation mm -hmm. of the play. Um, I just think they looked a lot more comfortable um, yeah. out there. Speaking of comfort, though, uh, they were certainly comfortable with the New York Islanders throwing fists at each other. Uh, that was. <laughs> That was quite the, uh, I've been using the phrase Donnybrook, oh, which yeah. I think Paul hasn't heard the phrase Donnybrook oh, before. Oh, no, 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 you, no. You, Letter you, Kenny. If you've not watched the show Letter Kenny, you need to check it out. <laughs> yeah, it's a great one. And they throw the word uh, Donnybrook around quite a bit. Yes. Well, so the Buffalo game, you had a fight. Uh, well, sort of a pseudo fight. Yoakam Ryan basically got uh, it handed to him for a second. That was his, uh, <laughs> in Buffalo, that was the, 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 um, the fight in the Buffalo game right at the end when the game was over. Yoakam Ryan kind of grabbed the wrong guy and Zach Bogosian, uh, who's a giant compared to Yoakam <laughs> Ryan. But that was first fight for the Sharks this year, also the first fight of his entire career, <laughs> Yoakam Ryan. They don't really fight a lot in Europe. Uh, actually, is he European? Am I, am I right about that? I Honestly, with a name like Yoakam, I'm guessing. I but can't remember I what just, country yeah, it is. He's Euro well, yeah, anyway, they don't, they don't fight in whatever country it is. He took one on the, on the chops. I'm sure it'll be fun to play uh, Buffalo one more time before the oh, yeah. season's out, where we'll play in their barn uh, <laughs> and have maybe a little bit of retribution. But the Islanders game, you know, it, had you gone to that game uh, thinking there was going to be that amount of animosity, it's like, you know, Islanders are not somebody that right. 
we only play them twice a year, and even less than that when you had the old schedule a couple yeah. a couple seasons ago. So it was kind of out of nowhere. Yeah, there's no rivalry there. I don't know why they just yeah. didn't like each other that game. I don't know what it was, but well, it's um, too bad. And they said it on the broadcast that we don't, this that was the second of two games. So you know we're not going to see them yeah. unless you went to the finals uh, against Islanders, which wouldn't be bad based on what I've seen. I'd be fine with that last game. Yeah, yeah Fist Cups though, it's always fun. I think it's a it's a um, Paul and I were talking about this before we started the the actual taping here. Is you know the thing I like about fisticuffs and hockey in general where you have fighting allowed is that allows the game to kind of police itself, right? You've got mm-hmm. um, two teams who you're never going to catch everything as referees or linesmen. There's too much going on. It's too high pace, sticks, uh, stick work, particularly around you know wrists and the back of the legs yeah. and everything else, which um, both you and I have played hockey, and that's not a lot of terribly fun stuff to be no. sma- uh, slashed, excuse me, and... <laughs> Um, just the ability to police. I like that a lot. I also think it's something fisticuffs. I always like to to watch it because I think it tells you a little bit about you know how much does the team uh, really like each other. I guess in a, in a certain way, it's the kind of standing up. You know, yeah. are people amped when Yogam Ryan? Uh, you know, that's a, maybe not the best example, but the Islanders in particular. That game, you saw. I mean, the entire bench or both benches for that matter, when Evander Kane came out. When Barkley Goodrow came out of the box, yeah. like they're all on their feet and they're yeah. smashing their sticks against the boards. Man, it tells you, okay, these this team or these teams, frankly, kind of have each other's back, and that, yeah. I think that's a good thing to see early on in the season. I also think, not to keep this going forever on the <laughs> fisticuffs, but I think it's the piece, the sandpaper dynamic of like making teams, making it hard for teams to play against you, is the thing. Uh, having watched the Sharks my whole life, I think that's the thing I wish they had more of. Bigger conversation in the playoffs. Okay. I think we've had we've lacked that element, and at least in my mind, I think that's something that would help us get to the uh, not only the finals but get over the the hump. Because um, I think that kind of grit and sandpaper that you yeah. build, not always from fighting in the playoffs, it's just from the, the hitting and the uh, annoying the other team. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's an important piece of the game. Yeah, I think uh, Evander Kane, and I've talked on the show about Evander Kane and his penalty minutes and whatnot, and Aaron and I have a a little bit of a disagreement, a a little bit of a disagreement on that. (laughs) Um, I'd like to see him more out of the box and scoring goals, but I Mm. I don't fault him for anything that's um, fighting or roughing, essentially, because roughing is really... They were fighting, but they didn't get fighting penalties. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So that's really what it comes down to. And they I should have gotten yelling penalties after that. Once they went in the box, like yeah. ne- neither of them were shutting up. It was, that was pretty funny to watch. <laughs> that was awesome, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the other thing I wanted to say about Evander Kane was um, when he was in the box, and that he the camera got on him. He's on the jumbotron, and he's sitting there. And he's looking down. He's doing this, you know. And all of a sudden, the crowd starts cheering and, and everything and, and so he kind of looks up and he sees what they're talking about and I was I was expecting this I was expecting to look up and then the, okay cool and look back down just kind of you know okay shake it whatever no big deal but no he, he looks up sees it looks down looks right back up and goes puts his hands up in the air like come on bring it bring it and everyone just lost their minds like everyone in the arena just lost their minds yep. and we've heard Pavelski say many times as the captain like you know you guys bring so much energy to us you amp us up you get yeah. us going and it was the circular, right? You've got the crowd getting Evander Kane amped, mm-hmm. amped, and, and I'm sorry, Evander getting us back to being even more amped and then getting the whole bench just ready to go. Yep. So, I mean, just that circular kind of love that everybody was feeling there, it was just really an awesome thing to see. Well, and it's it's a decent trade, I think, Evander Kane for, you know, Lee, their captain in particular. Oh, yeah. Like, okay, you can take, I mean, Kane's a very good player, but to take the captain off the ice for, for a bit and it to be... The fights that I, in particular, I think most people probably appreciate in hockey, it's not the staged stuff. You know, while this st- came off a of face-off, mm-hmm. these two guys wanted to kill each other off of a play earlier <laughs> and therefore got back at it. Yeah. And I think that's, it's again, a great example of policing, uh, you know, how the game should work and the referees don't have to really yeah. resolve anything. Um, speaking of uh, referees resolving things, I guess we got three games coming up uh, yeah. this week. Um, Nashville, Carolina, Anaheim, I think, mm-hmm. in that order. Um, this should be a good test, I think, of the Sharks and continued kind of early road trips. But what, yeah. Paul, do you think is going to be the well, the crux of that road trip? Yeah, so, I mean, obviously the crux of that road trip, it's going to be the game against Anaheim uh, because they're supposed to be first in the Pacific, uh, Mike Johnson. <laughs> yes, I will continue to harp on you for this one. <laughs> I don't see it happening, and uh, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But uh, obviously, sarcasm on that one. I think the Ducks game is not going to be a throwaway, uh, but it's 
I think we're if we keep playing the way that we're playing right now, we're just going to roll right over those guys, and that's that's just my my in my heart. That's what I feel. So uh, mm -hmm. I think the the biggest test. It's for me. It's split. I think you've got such a great team in Nashville. Mm -hmm. um, their defensive core is insane. Pekka Rene's out on the injured reserve, but mm -hmm. UC Soros is a beast. Um, he's like you said, a one A one B. I mean, yeah. it's almost like one A and one AA. I mean, he's he's right there on the cusp. I, it reminds me of the situation that they had. Um, both in Pittsburgh and in Tampa Bay, where you've got Matt Murray, who's mm -hmm. ready to jump in and just take the reins, and he does. Yep. And you've got Vasilevsky, who's ready to jump and take the reins, and he does. does. Pekka Rene has been on the IR off and on for uh, the last few years of his career, mm -hmm. and I can definitely see at some point UC Saros just taking the reins by means of him being younger, as good, and healthy <laughs> is really what it comes down to. Yeah. So I think... Pecorine being out, that's not necessarily a downgrade. I mean, you're going to have to go up against a really good goaltender. You're going to have to go up against, uh, up against the second best defensive core <laughs> in the league, in my opinion. Uh, and they're no slouch on the offensive front. They roll four lines, you know. Um, yeah. Well, in that barn, I think, you know, you've just got so much, you know, the Nashville, Yes. you know, it seems like an amazing place to go see a game. I have not seen one there, but I think there's mm -hmm. just a lot of history, not only recently of the Nashville team kind of getting that city and that state kind of jacked for hockey mm -hmm. and really kind of workmanlike ethic their team has where they roll. You know, they don't have the big superstars yeah. hop top in. Maybe on the defensive side you could argue Subban in particular mm -hmm. um, or Yossi. But the the collective kind of team dynamic in the crowd there is pretty awesome. And yeah. there's you know there's probably plenty of history you go back in Sharks uh, Sharks lore where they were kind of beating Nashville up for a while in the playoffs. Uh, you know, I think Nashville hasn't necessarily fully forgotten yeah. that. Um, but I think this game on Tuesday will be probably the, the highest caliber opponent the Sharks have faced this season. So if you want to look yeah. at something to like benchmark against, panic versus yeah. patience, uh, I think Tuesday would be a pretty good game to say, okay, have you yeah. really figured it out? Because Buffalo and the New York Islanders are, you know, good, but Nashville is not great. Way better. Yeah, and I agree. And I would think that um, that's going to be a big, um, uh, a big measuring stick for the Sharks to see mm -hmm. how they they compare. I also think Carolina is not not a team to look over uh, or, or to to look past and yeah. say whatever, throw away. Uh, Carolina, as of recent, hasn't been that great of a team this season. Uh, they seem to be the real deal. I mean, they're, they're, the shot numbers, we were comparing about how many shots the, uh, the, the Sharks put on goal and that they're out shooting pretty much everyone in the league. Carolina's right there. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're right there with us in some categories of the advanced stats. They're actually ahead of us with certain ways that you look at the amount of shots that are put on and per 60 and percentages and whatever else. Carolina's right there. So uh, they're going to be a team that if you give them possession of the puck, good luck, right? Because yep. they're going to keep possession of it and they're yep. going to throw it on. I'm very interested in seeing how those two types of teams, San Jose Sharks, Carolina Hurricanes, how their possession numbers being so great for the, the majority of the season, when they go head-to-head, -head, mm -hmm. who's going to take the puck more often? Because someone's got to lose. It mm -hmm. can't have 50%, you know, both of them having over 50%. So it's going to be a really interesting game to see. For sure. The, I think the possession numbers for the Sharks for the, the season so far have been pretty impressive, even if the early, you know, first four or five games, you didn't have the result coming out of yeah. it. But... In Nashville, Carolina, better teams, probably the Nashville in particular, the best team of the season so, that we'll have faced so far. Mm -hmm. um, but it being away games, you have uh, the disadvantage of not having last change. I think yes. that'll be interesting. You know, the last two games, great outcomes, everything else, mm -hmm. you know, is it really figured out? I don't know. You really know that until you've gone into other people's barns and said, okay, we can, we can roll that same type of play, all four lines, all three defensive pairings in someone else's house yeah. where they control what matchup happens, yeah. at least after the you know the set plays, if it's not kind yeah. of rolling play. So. Yeah, and to, to that point, I'm actually pretty confident e either way, because the way I see our lines, again, I try not to say first line, second line, third line, I try to give it the uh, the name of the center, right? <laughs> because I think that our third line, the Sumela line, I think is just as good as most other teams' second lines or, or first lines. I think they match up really well against anybody in the league, and uh, Aaron's talked about this too, you know, we're creating these mismatches, and yep. I think that's what you're going to see. You're going to see our guys who are perceived third liners going up against, you know, other teams' second line and whatnot, I'll, I, I think no matter who the opposing team throws out there, mm -hmm. we're going to match up pretty well. Unless we got a, you know our our uh, let's call it the Goodrow line, the Rourke Charte line. Unless that lands out there against an, the Johansson line, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, that's that's a bit of a mismatch in their favor. But other than that, I, I think we're going to match up really well, no matter no matter which way you slice it. For sure, I think that that's what makes it exciting to watch the Sharks this season, in oh, particular, yeah. just the potential of 
this all really working out where really any line combination, any defensive pairing you throw out there, um, I don't think you're giving coaches easy outs or easy yeah. options to say, oh gosh, you know, how do I how do I line match any of this? Right. So. Cool. Well, in the spirit of staying patient, uh, I have been trying to stay patient because I keep seeing our subscribership up at around the 960, 40 something ish mark. <laughs> and I can't wait for us to get to a thousand. So I am losing my patience. Um, please like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. Get us out to all your friends because when we hit 1000 subscribers, we'll be doing a promotion. I don't know what it will be just yet, but it will be mm. awesome. And uh, unknown promotion. That's yeah. always a good crowd seller, Paul. Uh, right? <laughs> so um, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll think of something good. Um, can't wait to, to do it. And I mean, you guys have seen we've given out some shirts, we've given out a, a hat, and uh, I'm sure this one's going to be just above that. So. Well, well, frankly, I'd also be I'd be personally uh, thankful to everyone who to sus to subscribe at this point because then I could call Aaron. <laughs> Who you know I've substituted for for this particular show and tell him that we you know we yes. we not him uh, Got over pushed it over you know <laughs> the thousand mark so help me out people come on you heard the man's plea so uh, <laughs> please go ahead hit that subscribe button and please most importantly share it to all your friends it's the only way we can get out to everybody else who might be sharks fans uh, is if we're getting involvement from the community please make sure to throw those comments down there we love talking with you guys. Uh, make sure you take a look at the live show as well. We have one right before this. We had a lot of great questions. Uh, we love talking with you guys and interacting. So that brings us to the end of episode 19. Thank you very much for joining us. And we will see you guys next week. Next week. <laughs> Bye-bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.